A city on the verge of greatness. A new type of city, based not on the man, but on the automobile, the car, the symbol of freedom and vitality. In conjunction with Rockstar Games, Team Bondi set out to develop a suspenseful crime thriller. The goal was to create an experience unlike any game before it, while in the process creating a new category for its genre. The product of this experiment is L.A. Noir, a dark, third-person mystery thriller that sets you in the shoes of a detective in 1940s crime-ridden Los Angeles. Is L.A. Noir a groundbreaking entry to a hopeful new genre of gaming, or does it remain an unsolved mystery? Time to find out. This is your first case, Phelps. It's okay to admit it if you're stumped. If you don't know what to do next, just come talk to me and we'll see what we can do. In L.A. Noir, you play as Cole Phelps, a much-honored and decorated World War II veteran rigorously bent on making a name for himself in Los Angeles, California. As a detective in the Los Angeles Police Department, your objective is to take on an increasing series of cases within the confines of Hollywood, many of which are based on real-life crimes. The expansive plotline will begin to unfold bit by bit with each case that you undertake. After the successful completion of each self-contained case, you'll be bumped rung by rung up the ladder of success within the LAPD. Along the way, you'll meet an ever-expanding cast of interesting, scary, and oftentimes entertaining characters that will either help or hinder your investigations. In addition to this, many references are made to the war, specifically the Battle of Okinawa, where Phelps spent the majority of his military career. Not to mention the fine work you did in the war, sending heathens back to the hell they came from. But I'm curious as to whether you can turn your hand to interrogation. It takes a certain animal cunning, lad. These events also hold dark secrets that are carefully interwoven in stories throughout the game. As the plot progresses, you'll begin to realize how closely the war and the people are intertwined and the corruptness of those in powerful positions. With each investigation you conduct, and with every case that you solve, you'll come closer and closer to the dark and corroded truth that lies within the heart of post-war Los Angeles. I, I can't thank you enough. I'm not promising a cure, Courtney. I want you to remember that. Every physician has patients that he cannot hope to cure, for whom he can only smooth the path to death. The presentation in L.A. Noir is completely unmatched. The facial animations are unparalleled to that of any game before it, and is another step toward photorealism in video games. While the visuals themselves are not the highest on the market, it's in the smooth animation and character design that L.A. Noir really shines. This animation is done through a technology called Motion Scan, which enables a capture of every detail of an actor's performance and places it right into the game itself. Unlike traditional hand animation, Motion Scan physically scans the performance of the actors and places them on the digital characters within the game to allow for a realistic, emotional, and more detailed experience. This, coupled with the outstandingly spot-on voice acting, provides the player a real and gritty detective experience. I need to get back to work, officer. The detectives are here now. You repeat to them what you told me. I did the right thing by calling this in. I'm just a working stick. Just give them your story and you'll be all right. While most games tend to aim for either a fantastic narrative or excellent gameplay, L.A. Noir sets out to do both, and does so exceptionally well. Having finished the game cover to cover, I can say that the plot derived within L.A. Noir is a pleasing one, though with brutal homicide, heartbreaking discoveries, and shocking realizations all seen from the player's perspective. While the game primarily sits in the third-person perspective of Cole Phelps, it's not afraid to reposition itself in a more cinematic manner, offering a gritty, film noir-style composition. As a detective in the 40s, you'll make your way through a series of cases and investigations, all split up into one of four desks. Traffic, Homicide, Vice, and Arson. Starting out in Traffic, you'll deal with cases of domestic disturbance and street crimes like robberies and theft. Once you've made a name for yourself within the realm of Traffic, you'll make your move up to the Homicide Desk, where you'll handle cases of murder and suicide, all coupled with mysterious riddles peppered throughout. After Homicide, you'll move on to Vice and Arson, containing investigations into drug circuits, gambling, and illegal activities of all assortments. In addition to the typical clue searching, question asking, and evidence gathering parts of the game, there are some quirky elements that really bring you into the world of L.A. Noir. For example, when you use a telephone in-game, you'll notice that the player can't call a person directly, they must be connected via an operator first, as is to be expected from a phone in 1947. There are also game wells scattered around LA that allow you, as a policeman, to call dispatch in order to retrieve locations, details, and criminal records on file. These nuances add to the immersion of the experience. You may ask, what about the gunplay? This is just Grand Theft Auto in the 1940s, right? 
that's where you're wrong. While LA Noir has elements of a Rockstar title nestled within its gameplay and world, this is by no means GTA. You'll find no means of shooting civilians, jacking helicopters, or firing off RPGs at city buses. This game focuses primarily on the aspect of playing a detective whose objective is to do some good in the world, busting one criminal at a time. With all this shifting around, at first glance, one might feel that the pace of LA Noir is rather slow, and it is. In fact, it may be one of the weakest parts of the game, apart from the odd ending. Unless you're completely involved in the cases you're undertaking, there's a good chance that you'll grow bored of not finding clues, speaking to witnesses, and driving from varied locations. Speaking personally, I very much enjoyed playing a detective, as well as all the aspects associated with it. However, there were points within the game that I found myself achieving hair-pulling levels of frustration from the simplest of tasks. Oftentimes, the cases are fairly straightforward, and it's not too hard picking a culprit for a crime. Sometimes, though, there can be very little substantial evidence, and screwing up multiple questions inside of an interrogation can become very frustrating. Repetition is in surplus in L.A. Noir, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, the narrative of the game is what keeps you interested through so much repetition. The desire to learn more and more about the ongoing mysteries in the city will keep you from turning your console off on multiple occasions. Finally, after each case you'll receive a report totaling your performance in the investigation. This takes into account the number of interview questions asked correctly, clues successfully found, and even negatory stats, like automobile damages and civilian injuries, usually done by your vehicle. Aside from the main cases, there are a multitude of collectibles to gather, including secret cars and newspapers, which interestingly enough add more depth and background to the already deep narrative. In terms of detective style gameplay, it delivers. However, there were a few noticeable glitches that popped up during gameplay. These were usually aesthetic and not game affecting, but still pretty immersion breaking to the presentation and experience. In addition, the game can seem extremely repetitive and sometimes dull to a player that isn't completely immersed in the story. In respect to its cinematic showcasing of the true crime in the streets of post-war LA, it outperforms anything on the market. It truly plays like an interactive movie with puzzle-solving elements, thought-crunching mysteries that really provoke one's intellect, and provides a stellar cast of well-voiced and well-animated, believable characters across the board. Personally, I think that anyone could enjoy LA Noir. However, if you're not into detective work and deciphering evidence and would rather spend your time elsewhere, then LA Noir is most likely not for you. But, if you find yourself on the contrary and thoroughly enjoy a film noir-esque narrative where everyone has something to hide, then you'll love LA Noir. Because of this, I give LA Noir an 8.5 out of 10.